I want to discuss something that kind of ties in with what we spoke about in the last video. So the last video was all about like whether we're using our time properly, whether we're allocating our time to the correct things, about the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle, and whether you know, you're using your time to the smaller things that are going to have the disproportionately big impact on your trading results. So today kind of follows on for that because I think there's something that some of you are doing which is probably wasting your time because you're not using it properly. And some of you are not even doing this and that's even worse if you're not doing this at all. And that's actually using the results from your trading that you record in your trading journal to benefit your future trades. Like some people know that they have to put, you know, record trades in their trading journal. Well, I think that everyone probably knows it. I bang on about it all the time. We had a video before, like I think last year, where I try to be a little bit funny about it just to drive the message home. And some of you like that one, link is down below for that. But you know, it's one thing to actually take note of these trades and to record that data. And it's another thing to actually make use of it. So maybe you're one of the few people that glance over the trades that actually reviews it at the end of the day or the end of the week or a future point in time. And that's great. That's an important part of actually learning something properly. You'll remember from the Great Trader series, also linked below, I'm gonna put a lot of links down below on this video. You'll remember from that series that an important part of deliberate practice and of learning things in an accelerated way that you can become like masterful or something. An important aspect of that is to get feedback and to reflect on the things that you've been doing. So not only to actually go through the process of practicing and developing your skill, but also to reflect and to check that the technique was right, to get feedback on that and then reflect on the feedback. So that's one aspect of using your trading journal. But there's also a more important aspect. So obviously reflecting on the journal is all about learning, but even if you are a profitable trader or if you're not quite there but you know how to trade then there's an important aspect for actually making your trades more profitable for understanding what can be improved and this is all about optimization because if we're trading consistently i.e we're following a system and strategies that make it a consistent approach each and every time and if we're collecting this data in our trading journal we suddenly have a store of consistent data or following the same approach with different outcomes each time and we can look through that data to start optimizing. This is when you can start to look for patterns and things that are consistent each and every time in the results, things that you can tweak, things that you can test to see what happens, see how you can get better and improve over time to make sure that over time you're not suddenly falling into bad habits or something that you've not been picking up on hasn't quite been working. So I think this is an essential part of trading or at least it's been an essential part of my approach for trading because before I took this approach then everything I was doing was more amateurish it was more like as if it was a hobby I was just doing it for the fun of it and of course you can still retain the fun of it but if you're going to be a professional about things you want to know what's working and what's not and that's why we focus on this so much like we've mentioned it before in our tradepreneur ebook that you get for free for signing up for our inner circle maiden list the link is down below and also in the last sections of our full course we kind of focus on it quite heavily how you can continually continuously optimize not only your strategy and your system, but also your performance as a trader. And yet, even on our members forum, the people that have gone through that section of the course, I still don't see people focusing on that area. But when you look at successful traders, they do this. They look at models, they look at past results, and they start to think, where are the consistencies? Where are the things that need to be tweaked and changed? So just to cap off this video, which was a bit of a thought of the day type video, you know, I'm liking this format where I stack up the boxes and just sit down with the camera here at this table. So we might do more of these. But just to cap this off, I just wanted to show you some clips from some successful traders that you would have heard of and them talking about the same kind of approach. So we're gonna have a look at Jim Simons and we're gonna have a look at Ray Dalio and then I will see you after that. I was in my late 30s, I had a little money, I started trading and it went very well. Uh, I made quite a lot of money with pure luck. I mean, I think it was pure luck. It certainly wasn't mathematical modeling. But in looking at the data, after a while, I realized, hey, there's, looks like there's some structure here. And I hired a few mathematicians, and we started trying to make some models. It turns out, uh, in the old days, and this is kind of a graph from the old days, uh, commodities or currencies had a tendency to trend. Not necessarily the very light trend you see here, but, but trending in, in, in periods. And if you decided, okay, I'm going to predict today by the average move in the past 20 days, there's 20 days, uh, maybe that would be a good prediction and I'd make some money. And in fact, uh, years ago, such a system uh, would work. Not beautifully, but it would work. So you'd make money, you'd lose money, you'd make money, but this is a year's worth of days. 
the real thing was to gather a tremendous amount of data. And, and uh, we had to get it by hand in the early days. We went down to the Federal Reserve and copied interest rate histories and stuff like that, because it didn't exist on computers. We, we got a lot of data. And uh, so that's what we did. And uh, gradually, these models got better and better and better and better. We take in terabytes of data a day and uh, store it away and massage it and get it ready for analysis. And uh, you're looking for anomalies. Any one anomaly might be a random thing. However, if you have enough data, you can tell that it's not. So uh, you, you, you can see an anomaly that's persisted for a sufficiently long time so that the probability of it being uh, random is, uh, is not high. But these things uh, fade after a while. Anomalies can get washed out. So you have to keep on top of the business. Every time I encountered something um, and I thought, how would I make a decision? I took the time to write down the criteria that I would use to make that decision. Yes. So they became written principles. And then I found that everything changed when I wrote them down because other people then could look at them and we could say, what are our principles? Yes. And we could be clear on what we could be with each other. And guide and, all decisions from it. And all decisions. And then eventually I learned that I could take some of these decisions, all our investment decisions, and a lot of the people decisions, and put them into algorithms. Yes. And have the computers make decisions with me. So it changed everything when I wrote them down. So the, this is basically, think of it almost as a recipe book. Yes. Right? Yes. And for if you encounter this thing, here's the principles I wrote for dealing with that thing. Yes. And then those have been vetted. Well, I think that to think of it, our, the human body is a gorgeous machine. It's like our brains as gorgeous machines. It shows that how they have, how they develop, how they have uh, cause effect relationships. And I think we're all, the whole ecosystem is a machine. When we start to think about that, we can think about how do we interact with the machine? How do we influence the machine? How do we make the machine work for us? So I'm talking about reality. Okay, there are th three things you need to do in order to be successful, right? I mean, well, most importantly, you have to know what the best decisions are, and then you have to have the courage to make them. And so when you look at those uh, choices that you have, you have to be able to deal with reality and if you f just view it as a machine and not something that's happening to you that you don't own, I think it helps give you a psychology. It helped me. You know, cause-effect relationship. How does this machine work? It's, uh, but anyway, whatever the term is that uh, you're comfortable with, when you realize it is kind of a machine, right? So guys, I hope you picked up on some golden nuggets of information from those extremely successful guys. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts or what your favorite part was. If you like this video, this sort of format of sitting down, quite an informal thought of the day. And if you like having the clips in the video as well, then make sure you hit that thumbs up button so I know to bring you more like this. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and switch on notifications by clicking the little bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our new videos coming out. And also the links, as I mentioned, are in the description box down below, including signing up for our Inner Circle mailing list. You get access to our four-part video mini-series explaining the foundations of our method of trading and that Tradepreneur ebook that I mentioned earlier. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. Take care and I'll see you soon.